Welcome to the Chasing Ebenezer Show. This is a show where we talk about stuff, play you some music, and encourage you to be creative. This season, we are exploring the art of being human. We want to say thank you to our patrons who support us each month. If you want to know more about that, visit us on patreon.com backslash Chasing Ebenezer. For more information about our musical endeavors, visit ChasingEbenezer.com. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Chasing Ebenezer show. If this is your first time watching, I'm Benjamin and this is Heidi. And we are filming in our new place. This is another room. We were in the living room last time. And we're going to be in a couple different places until we have uh, our garage set up to be doing this kind of thing all the time. But super glad to be here. Super glad to be hanging out with you. We want to say thank you to our patrons who have been supporting us each month. If you're not on Patreon with us, go to Patreon. Look for Chasing Ebenezer. Sign up for whatever dollar amount you want. Uh, everything has like different perks. And uh, you'll get early access to recordings when they're complete and uh, all that fun stuff. A couple updates for you. We have started the pre-production process of our next full-length album. Pre-production. What does that mean? Or pre-pre-production. What does that mean? Well, it sounds really professional, right? Well, what it means is basically right now, maybe it's pre-pre-production. What we're doing right now is just going through our songs getting them really ironed out and arranged with the band. Like we've been playing with a metronome together, which if you've never done that before. It's always wrong. It's always, the metronome is always wrong. Uh, so we're just trying to get all those things dialed in. So when we go in and start actually recording, it'll be. In the garage. In the garage that will, it'll be a pretty seamless process. So my hope is to start recording in some way, shape or form for the full length by the end of summer. That's. The hope. Oh, but but we also have some singles that we've been working on. Mm -hmm. On the down, final so. editing stages for um, our single "City," which we hope to have released. The, my sinus infection delayed us. My, my so hope is the end of my, spring. That's my the goal. Unfortunate bad. That's the goal. So the, the, those are the updates for you. But we're super glad to have you on this journey with us. So what are you excited about? I am excited because my niece is taking an interest in a, in the piano and my mom was the piano player that I grew up around and so I'm just really excited to see I'm a mediocre faker piano so I'm going to teach her what I know and then she's going to surpass me is my is what I'm anticipating is going to happen. So this is really cool to see that instrument being appreciated by by her so nice and maybe i'll actually learn a few things it's that darn left hand that's so hard for me like uh, like is it just playing with your left hand in general or is it combining it with the right hand while well you're doing it? <laughs> that too and this just, is my piano just the, like the treble here. clef the right hand those i much because it's the same as the violin the mm. notes so the left hand is just oh harder so it's also lazy <laughs> I am excited. I, honestly, the main thing I'm excited about right now is just living in this new place. Mm -hmm. Our cat is actually really excited about it. We decided to, uh, because our other place is slowly disintegrating, disintegrating <laughs> with all the stuff. If you've moved, you understand. And our cat was just getting really stressed out. And, they, and you know, I've heard it said that like if you move a cat, that's really traumatizing for him. And she's 19. Oh, she's and she's chiming in just now. But you know what? We moved her, and all of a sudden, it was like she became younger. She's she living is, her best. You might hear her right now. <laughs> She's been running around and just enjoying it. So it's kind of nice. So animals don't like uh, boxes and crap everywhere no. either, apparently. They probably hate it worse than you do. Yeah, so that, that, I think that's probably the biggest thing. I'm excited about getting done with moving. That's the best part. You know, so that's coming. Yes. To be able to settle into like a routine. Because it's, it's, I mean, routine's hard anyway for what we do, but like... I think because this was such a big hurdle, to be able to have a little bit more definitive structure in our life is something I'm very excited about. We'll see how it goes in a couple weeks. Yeah, I know. I know. 
How are you feeling your humanity these days? Well, we're going to talk about conflict this week, and so that's an area where I feel completely ill-equipped. So really, uh, this episode is more about needing help because... <laughs> <laughs> Free therapy for you know, us. You just because comment. conflict, you know, <laughs> if you've ever moved, you know that sometimes you're not the best uh, communicator when that's happening. So <laughs> Ben looks away. <laughs> so anyway, I'm learning that I don't always communicate well in those situations. So, you know. Neither do I. I'm finding my humanity, and it's connected to this and other projects. Finishing things, starting things is starting things often, is great. It's new. Great. It's wonderful. Like there are so many books I have started. There are so many projects I've started, and then I feel bad because I haven't finished them. And we're at that last stage of the move where there's all this nitty gritty crud that I don't know what to do but I have this phobia of throwing things away because it might be important <laughs> for my life later um, so I'm feeling the anxiety of that and what I respond to when I feel that way is how do I avoid it how do I avoid it so that's how I'm feeling my humanity yeah. it'll all be over in a few weeks one way or the other <laughs> yes. yes so as Heidi said we're going to be talking about conflict as a part of being human so, here we go. So when it comes to conflict, there are people that avoid conflict, and there's people that, I don't know, I don't know whether they like thrive on it or they create it, which one do you tend to lean towards? Both. So I'm the worst like type of person. all three? Don't you think? Because like, if it's with you, I don't know if you can hear the hollering in the hallway. We're not taking uh, it out. No. But um, I feel like with you, I unintentionally create conflict. And then with people who are not in my family, then I avoid conflict. So I'm just both. You're complicated. You're human. I'm so annoying. Like, not cool. Like, <laughs> I don't know if I'd say annoying. I just, and I think that fighting versus conflict aren't necessarily the same thing. Okay, okay. So, get into that a little bit well, more because that one's a new one for me. Because fighting feels like a war and like yelling and. But conflict, you know. <laughs> I mean, conflict can be expressing a difference of opinion. Yeah, that's true. But it's not necessarily fighting, so I don't. I don't. To you. To me. To you. But so I don't know definitions and words and what they mean. To can have a very different. We can respond to what they mean differently. So mm -hmm. it's not like I've looked up these definitions. I have a really complicated relationship with conflict. Um, I don't like conflict. I, I I really really identify with the avoiding conflict and unpleasantness. So much so, so when I was a child, I was with another child who shall remain nameless, uh, who was playing video games. And the parent of that child was asking them to stop. And it got to the point of telling them to stop playing the game to where the person got up, angrily turned the game off, sat down, and then got up and kicked her. And I was the one that ran and hid behind the couch because I knew he was going to get in trouble and I was going to witness conflict. That's how Kicking it Kicking your mother is generally it's frowned not upon a prescribed usually. solution. So, so I know that that is how I feel when conflict is happening. I want to go to another room, to another state, mm -hmm. another country, <laughs> another planet. But the problem is, is that when I'm brought in to help a situation where two other people are in conflict... I find that I'm really gifted at making both sides feel heard. You're a good, like, is it a mediator? Yeah. But you don't really enjoy it. No. But you just I'm not. I'm not advertising it. services on that at all because I, I want to live a long time. <laughs> um, but, like, the, the, the weakness in that, though, is that sometimes um, I'm so nice to both sides that both sides think I'm on their side. <laughs> 
And so I keep my well, objective I mean, third-party opinion out. It's not out. necessarily a bad thing. <laughs> no, it's not. But it, it's limited. It's limited. Um, uh, yeah. But I uh, I don't tend to like conflict. There's, there's times where I know that I have to have a hard conversation or I have to be in a fight. Like a, not a fist fight, but a, um, where, where I know this is going to get ugly, but I have to go through it. And that's, that it's not something I want to do, but it's like, I, I, it's not like I'm going to avoid it because, you, you know, addiction is, you know, you, you continue this bad behavior in spite of negative consequences. I'm not like that with avoiding conflict. I know that sometimes you just got to fight. <laughs> you just do. You got to say what you think and, ugh. Well, it's so interesting because... So many of us as humans don't really enjoy conflict, but when we're watching a story unfold, like in a movie or a book, oh, man, that's, that's so what true. we want. You And that's how a plot keeps moving. Is It's a conflict here, and then a conflict here, and a conflict here. If there's nothing happening, and the character's not constantly being challenged, we tend to lose interest. So it's, it's just so interesting, because that's in, in how they teach you how to write stories. Constantly put in yep. conflict. So it's just so, it's so strange that we can look for that and it holds our interest often if it's happening in art. Sure. But then there's even, but then there's super, there's other, certain movies or TV shows though where the conflict is so intense that some of us have to look away <laughs> yep. or, or we start to feel it. Yep. It's just, so it's just really odd to me that it's like we... We don't like being there, but we love watching it Other happen people, from I a know. safe distance. If you watch the news, I was getting ready know, to say because because I, <laughs> I have a tradition on my days off, which is me and our cat watch Meet the Press, <laughs> and 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 it's civil, but like I'm not watching it because I'm wanting to see what's going on well in the world. I want to see people ranting about other people, and that's kind of wrong, <laughs> but I do it. Uh, yeah, so. But, but what I have found though, like, cause I was trying to think what, what forms of entertainment do I consume that don't involve conflict? Is there any? Well, the cat videos on YouTube where the animals are just eating the food. Oh, where they're just. That's very calming okay, for me. Okay. 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 And so sometimes I watch that <laughs> between watching conflict. So you need, you need to like, you know, what do you cleanse the palate of your brain so you can have more conflict? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So what kind of, um. Con what 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 tends to trigger you towards conflict? When I don't feel understood, when I feel stressed out. And you're looking at me. When I feel no, because I do this all the time. I don't mean to. (laughs) I don't even know that I'm doing it. It's just so it's a it's so natural that when there's stress that I unintentionally lash out or get really nitpicky or start focusing on things that aren't really the thing that I'm upset about or. Um, or focusing on all the things that are worrying you at one time. Yeah, but like if I'm calm Just and there's not deadlines, or you know, I feel understood. So, and sometimes I don't know if we even know why we're upset about the mm-hmm. things that we're upset about. So, like you kind of feel it before you know what's going on. With that, sometimes, yeah. or I'm in the middle of conflict. I think, how did we get here? <laughs> How did I get when here? When did the house catch on fire? What I happened? Just, yeah, yeah. I don't, and part of, part of it probably depends on how we were raised and the, envir- the environment we grew up in affects how we communicate now. And I'm in therapy for a reason. And so... <laughs> yeah. I think for me, it's definitely being criticized. If I feel like I'm being unfairly criticized... Uh, I get defensive and, and my defensiveness isn't yelling. It's being passive aggressive. I do it very well. You're very good at it. But it it does not, (laughs) it it tends to never yield the results that, um, you know, you know, I don't even know what I'm hoping for when I say it. It's more of like, I'm angry, but I'm too nice to be angry. So I'm just going to do this. That's more of what it is. (laughs) But yeah, being criticized will do it. Uh, Another thing that happens though, is that if I'm anticipating, um, something that's unpleasant, Yes. I will have run scenarios through my mind of potential arguments with people. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, so so that'll 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 make me more like on edge. On edge. You're almost ready yeah, for like for I'm, a problem. I, like I'm in a bad mood before I've even done anything. I did uh, that yeah, I did that the other day, anticipating a problem that didn't happen, by the way. <laughs> um, so yeah. Yeah. 
Well, and conflict has been, it's been around since Adam and Eve, you know? True story. They start blaming each other. And it, so Cain and Abel, I mean, this has been, conflict is, is a human thing. <laughs> So what would you say, because there's conflict that's worth having and conflict that isn't worth having. Generally, if there, if murder is involved, it's not worth worth uh, having, having it. <laughs> you just set the bar so high. <laughs> How can we ever, ever come up with anything <laughs> so if else? If you haven't murdered someone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great. I haven't killed anyone today. <laughs> with my eyes. Well, oh. how, how many people have been killed with your eyes? Um <laughs> Well, yeah, like what, what is the difference between probably good conflict and bad conflict? I'd love to know the, the people out there's opinion. I, I mean, what, what do We're you not going to fight about it, but no, I'm curious. No, no, I mean, I think that if, 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 if both, if truth and love and all those things can still be present, that's great. If, 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 uh, I don't know. It's hard to know. Sometimes it's not that a conversation or a conflict needed to happen as much as the way it's done and the volume at which it's done and the words used. <laughs> because we're naturally going to disagree as human sure. beings. So I would say that a conflict is worth having when it's for the betterment of another person or like the betterment of a project. And sometimes we don't know what that is. Like, you know, you and I can have conversations with each other and when they're not intense, it can be like, Oh, okay, cool. I'll do something different about that. But if it's, if it's something that's like just rooted in who I am or rooted in who you are, sometimes it takes a very strong, hard conversation to like break it to, to bring it to the surface to make you willing to like look at it or me i'm not just saying you but um what is it you say to me if it's not going to matter in 20 minutes then do you have to bring it up is that what you said that's another good rule no no murder and if it's going to not matter in 20 minutes yeah <laughs> these are all good 10 things. or 20 minutes from now yeah no because i i do think that sometimes avoiding a hard conversation or avoiding conflict over something that's worth fighting over actually makes the problem worse. I mean, how many sure. relationships blow up over not having not addressing hard and not right, addressing and not addressing and over and over again. So yeah, but being able to identify those things is hard, I guess. Cause you have to have a trust with the person that you're ha or people that you're having the conversation with but also you have to be willing to kind of hear their side of it. And I know I don't always bring things up because I don't want to hear the other person's opinion because I'm quite happy with my own. Thank you very much. Um, so that's some of that's some of what I'm thinking with the whole good conflict. Bad conflict is over petty things. Petty. You, 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 you pick your list. Um, me, it's how the car gets packed after a show. I don't need to get in a fight at that. I am... I'm not controlling about a lot of things, but I realize I am really controlling about that. And I'm sorry. Well, and it's not that it's not a valid point that you have a way you want it done because then it creates less work later. Uh, apparently, there's a war going on with our cat and her stuffed animal in the hallway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she must know what we're talking about. Yeah. So let me shift this a little bit because, you know, we, we talk about conflict. Conflict's supposed to... There's good conflict. There's bad conflict. And there's conflict with creativity, right? I mean, we can talk, we're going to talk about internal conflict in a little bit, but when you work with a group of people, everybody's going to have a different opinion about a creative project, right? So what kind of causes creative conflict with you? Like when working with me, you can be when as honest I, when as When I don't want. like an idea. <laughs> or my okay. idea is not being heard. Okay. Okay. If my name's going to go on it and I don't love your part of it, then it's like, you know, <laughs> and to not say condescending things and yet yeah. be kind and honest is difficult. I feel like you're usually pretty 
you, I, I can tell that you're trying really hard not to be condescending. And so then like that it actually seems to bother you more. It does. Like when you're and like, I, I just, can tell you're trying and, not and to I'm, be... And I'm just condescending. And well, I'm sorry. you know. <laughs> I just, so yeah, I think creative vision is a constant source of working with other people mm-hmm. and, and coming together and listening and 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 being willing to try things out that you're not yep. really keen on. Yep. Our drummer Ryan is I feel like really good at this and he should be on the show right now talking about yeah, it. Yeah, he should. <laughs> because you know, we all of us in our band have very different creative backgrounds and we have I would say yeah, strong creative opinions, but I feel like we express them lovingly to one another when we're in a group like Ryan is really good at like saying, hey, why don't we try this? Can we try something? Can we try something? And our old band member, David, um, would always say, you know you want to try it when he had some off-the-wall idea to put into our songs. And for me, it's been good because it's kind of helped me because usually what needs to change in a song is I need to be less busy because I like to be really busy and intricate in my guitar playing. So when oh, someone, we like to take turns, and when so when someone says, "Oh, could you do sure. less?" I don't get offended, but I feel like, but I don't. I think you do get offended. Well, when you say it, when other people don't, because it's not personal at that point. I think we should fight. There's right now there's about being it. married right now and in a band that that Which that's is all kinds the dream. of stuff. It's the it is the dream. That's wonderful. You're welcome. You're welcome. No, but like I know for me, it's like the. There's a resistance because I don't know what to do. And so that causes a little bit of... So it's shame and... Yeah. Shame and, and shame. Just some more shame. But it's worth doing though. Because like even when we did Outcasts and Refugees, how many of those songs started out one way, but because other people came in and had different opinions, the song evolved, expanded, and became something that I could, I know I could not or you could not have imagined on your own. So it was worth going through that process of collaboration. So let's talk about internal conflict. Oh, why not? What kind of things, because we have conflict with one another. We, you know, in a group project, as, as we were arguing yesterday, I said you were the responsible person in the group project and I was the one that would wait to the last minute to get things done so there's but it was said and it's the opposite of a compliment (laughs) what's the opposite of a compliment (laughs) a put down sorry so we have those kind of things with conflict but there's also this internal conflict that honestly, I think boils over. Yeah, the sure, it totally right. does. So yeah. What kind of things do you have to create conflict within your own self? Well, at the end of the day, the foundation is not accepting being fully loved by God, and that like even if I make the worst mistake in the world, I'm still worth, 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 worth it. Yeah. That, that it's it's you know. So when we don't f- truly feel loved and able to let that be the grid through everything, then everything else is life and death. So whether okay. it's, you know, whether it's, I don't know how to finish this, or I think, I don't think I'm going to finish this in time, or I didn't, this thing that was in my head didn't, just didn't come out the way that the magic and the beauty in my head was and so whatever it is can then just leach into everything Mm. else and then we don't rest we're not calm we're not peaceful and then that of course then affects everyone else Hmm. so if you're not especially if you're not comfortable enough to not be the best the perfect at everything to be the perfect at everything be the perfect (laughs) i like that it's good I think your answer is my answer. Is no, not, it's my answer. Not, not feeling answer. well because I usually wake up with a sense of something is wrong, something that isn't right terrible. with me. So I'm always having this internal conflict of not being enough, at peace. not not being at peace with who I am, and it's even to the point of where I'll think, oh well, if only I can have a, a day off, then I'll be okay. Oh. But then, like as I'm watching TV or doing whatever else I do, then I'm like, 
I have, I feel uneasy. I, I have need this, to do something. I, need to do I, something. I have this uneasiness or I need to plan for what I'm going to do later. Or, um, it, you know, if I just had a few minutes to myself, well, I'm the worst person to be <laughs> alone with. So, you know, it, it's one of those things where the, because I'm not at peace with who I am and I'm still kind of working through some of this. I'm going to have that kind of conflict. And then like what happens is like, I can't enjoy this because I can foresee a potential problem tomorrow. You know, like I can't enjoy today because I have said meeting tomorrow or the next day. And this is, these are all the things that could happen then. And so I start once again, like I said earlier, running those scenarios in my mind so I can be ready, ready for what I don't know. Cause it doesn't really help at all. Well, and you can try to, Plan for and all these disasters, and then there's always some disaster that can happen that you didn't foresee. This so, is true. So it's like it's you're just creating stress, conflict that, yeah. 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 So uh, conflict, creativity. What are some prompts? Do we just start a fight with somebody? Is that what the prompt is? Yeah, that's the prompt. <laughs> Oh, no, probably, probably not. You'll probably be able to do that without really trying if you, if you don't live very long. It's not much effort. Um, so I think really spending some time journaling and really assessing for yourself, kind of like we've done your whole view of conflict and when is it good, when is it bad, maybe just going through your own life experience about that and really c coming to kind of your own uh, assessment of that would be great. I think taking one of the great stories of conflict from history and creating something from it would be great. A lot of tragedies, Shakespeare and a lot of Greek tragedies, they're beautiful pieces. Many of them are devastating, of course. Uh, so you could re maybe you could rewrite one. How if if it gone a different way or they're famous obviously because they're they're teaching a lesson and this is the story of mankind but you could also do a spin on it that if it hadn't gone this way or if it gone another way like philip k dick's um what is it it's the thing that if 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 hitler oh, hadn't lost man, world war man ii in high the castle. man in the high castle yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what if so that can be an interesting spin if you take a conflict and, or maybe something went well in history. If it hadn't, that can be an interesting way to kind of like look at conflict. It's and a good idea. It is. Thank you. It's a good idea. I really appreciate it. Or create something um, that would be the opposite of conflict for you or the opposite of bad conflict. Like you could go do something with peaceful birds or something that would be kind of be the good and the bad. So there's so many options. What was one that you had in mind? I didn't you have didn't any. You didn't have one in mind. No. You left it all up to me. I didn't did. You tell me? I sure did. <laughs> oh. You came up with some good ones. Well, and I think one of the distinctions um, that I've heard over the years um peacekeeping versus pe peacemaking. Mm -hmm. Like someone who's a peacekeeper never wants to rock the boat. Right. But a peacemaker is willing to enter into conflict with the goal is to come out on the other side that truth and honesty, love is going to be better than just ignoring it. Right. So I went to a conference um, at a church some years back and that was a huge focus. Like doesn't mean we just don't say anything. <laughs> Right. But it also doesn't mean... <laughs> so I tend to do those two extremes, but the goal is to be a balanced person. That's the goal. That's the That's goal. The goal. <laughs> All right, so the song that I'm going to do is... It's a newer song for me. It's a song I wrote called Do Everything. And it means to do everything without complaining. So Without fighting? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's hard for me not to complain it, uh, in here. So I need this song very badly. So let us know. We'd love to hear your thoughts on conflict. Is it good? Is it bad? What kind of things do you like to fight about? <laughs> your top 10. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you soon. <laughs> Thank you.
do everything without grumbling or complaining when the world knows only shaming with the children of God do everything without fighting or disputing in a city bent on shooting with the children of God who oh, shine bright brighter than the stars With Christ our light Remembering who we are Do everything Do everything Do everything Without grumbling or complaining When the world knows only shaming We're the children of God Do everything Offering prayers of supplication Seek the welfare of the nations Be the children of God Oh shine bright Brighter than the stars With Christ Remembering who we are Oh shine bright Brighter than the stars With Christ our light Remembering who we are Do everything Do everything Do everything